Okay, people, so the big fight has finally begun. Boruto Naruto Next Generations, episode 198, Naruto Uzumaki versus Delta of Kara. Now, I gotta be honest with you because there's a lot of talk, a lot of chitter chatter regarding this episode in particular. Like I said last week, I did tell you guys that if it wasn't immaculate, there was going to be a lot of naysayers, a lot of people coming out the woo words to say, oh, this, that, and the third regarding this episode. So, we're gonna dive into the aesthetics, the art, and the animation. We're gonna talk about the source material itself, the fight. Kawaki, the goat here, the person that has been carrying this franchise on his back ever since he's been uh, put into the story. And just in general, we got a lot to say. So without further ado, people, let's talk a little bit of that Boruto anime. Like, it's going off, baby. No matter how you Okay, people, so like I said, Naruto versus Delta. It finally is here. We've been waiting a while. Ever since we got the announcement in the episode titles, I've been like, I can't wait. I am so here for this. Okay, so let's get one of the elephants in the room out the way regarding the art and the animation because this one was an outsourced episode. It wasn't done by Studio Piro themselves. They outsourced it. And I'll be honest with you, it wasn't stellar by any means. It wasn't like episode 65 levels or anything like that. The art was choppy at times, but for the most part, it was decent. It wasn't as horrible as the naysayers saying but in terms of like you know saying that it was on a 10 out of 10 it wasn't that either it was just good it was good enough that the source material could completely take over and shine through because like at the end of the day that's one of the big things why you watch it like you know the writing the story things like that the art and animation at the very least being passable is enough to say like could have been better but ultimately the the story the fight and all of that stuff really stood its ground because yeah like i said art and animation it was i it was times where it was a little bit wonky in particular a lot of Naruto's character design looked a little bit like uh, they could have done this better but ultimately it wasn't bad by any stretch of the imagination and again it was kind of cool especially there was some shots where Delta with the art of her like with the beams coming out of her eyes and things like that like they did a pretty good job like you could tell they really enjoy all these studios for that matter uh, animating Delta they always give her these exaggerated expressions which a lot of them stem from of course from the manga but like you could tell she's just an angry ass woman and they really make sure to demonstrate that with her facial expressions every time she gets pissed off about something now regarding the fight because it looked like and, and this is something that i gotta say naruto has changed a lot man if you go to early days naruto naruto shippuden even the knuckleheaded ninja ain't so knuckleheaded anymore sure you could argue that it's kind of comical but in terms of the way he fights i was just all through the moon about it like for starters he ain't waste no time he wasn't playing around this isn't a joke this isn't a game he was serious from the get-go he's like oh we, we about to throw down let's just jump straight into karama mode we're not playing right now we're not doing this with you you robotic bitch. so i love that already like that's like you know if we want to compare it to like a goku or vegeta you know they always say naruto of course was inspired by dragon ball and shit like that that was more of a vegeta-esque move like vegeta's not going to well let's just start off slow like he's gonna just go let's do the damn thing so i felt like that was a really awesome thing of naruto just straight up Karama mode. Let's throw down. And then here's a big thing as well. Another big change that I loved about Naruto. Because shortly into the fight, which this is a difference from the manga. I'll get to it in a second. Naruto gets impaled by one of, you know, the artificial technologies that Delta has through her body. Gets impaled and he's there like looking like he's dying. He's like, at least tell me this much. What is it? What is your plans? And if Delta wasn't sharp enough, this would have worked. But ultimately, Naruto was using strategy, playing possum, pretending like he was on death's door, trying to get information. It didn't work, but nevertheless, that is something huge with Naruto's character and a very big change. Sure, towards the end of Shippuden, you could argue there was a lot of strategy that he started to implement. But ultimately, this is on a great level and a great scale and a great observation of Naruto as a character. Like, he's a lot more thoughtful into how he throws down his combat. Like, yeah, the knucklehead is still in there. And honestly, it's just funny of him there. Like, oh, like, you know him playing dead so to speak to get the information but just i love seeing it i love seeing the evolution of naruto uzumaki you know you start off episode one and then you look at where he is as a grown-ass man protecting his children this is that that's character development again you could argue oh it took whatever it didn't really take that long because again even in shippuden he was starting to implement that little by little especially towards the end in the battles like you know in the fourth great shinobi war he was implementing strategy and here's some of the stuff that i love the family aspects of this because to be honest with you boruto 
show to a certain degree, especially the way the anime has been done, is almost a family show. Like honestly, the anime in particular feels like a real family show, a lot of family values. And when Naruto clarifies the Delta, he's like, yo, when I told you you're not going to touch anybody, you know, the, the people here, I was also including that kid, Kawaki. And that was right there building even further and cementing even further their bond. That is not just like, oh, this annoying ass kid. Like, yo, I gotta tail this kid around. I don't wanna be doing this shit. He actually genuinely cares for him. He understands him. He sympathizes with him. He reminds Naruto of himself and all the shit that he went through when he was younger. And you can tell that that hit Kawaki really hard right there, which really, every time we get moments like that, it just makes me wonder, then what the hell happens to get that very first episode when Kawaki and Boruto are going at it and they're talking about the end of the shinobi world and shit like that and Kawaki is seemingly on the opposition. How do we go from these moments from this episode to all the way that? What occurs? So definitely always intrigues me about the future of the Boruto series considering we have that major foreshadowing moment at the very start. And just quickly a little bit more I want to commentate on Delta because we see a lot of her robotic aspects because obviously she's a cyborg android whatever you want to call it because it was kind of clarified in this episode she's like yeah I got a lot of modified parts and you see that she can absorb chakra but I want to argue that she's still a human at the end of the day maybe there's some humanoid things or maybe she's just completely synthetic because again you see her using like some android 19-esque abilities except through her eyes of absorbing Naruto's Rasengan Boruto's Rasengan and then even spinning it out back at them that even reminded me a little bit of like an Otsutsuki-esque trait of you know being able to absorb and spit out the chakra and things like that but also again like you know her being able to morph her leg into a blade and shit like that like definitely you could tell that there's a lot more of a detail into the Kara members and, and what they're capable of I mean we already seen like you know somebody like Deepa that he was a bit of a strange fella and then now we're seeing Delta like okay so Amado and them they're really putting in work into these creations whatever they may be and then going back into the whole Kawaki family values again family family that's one of the things that Boruto just screams out, family. Family! Family! Kawaki in his own, you know, he's still kind of an asshole in a way. Like he's telling Boruto like, yo, take the, the shrimp out of here. She can't fight or nothing. Like just get her and scram. We got to protect shit. And at first Boruto's taking it as like, yo, why are you talking about my sister like that, fam? You want me to fuck you up? But like, no, Kawaki is in his weird, like, you know, a, a Sasuke. Think like Sasuke. That's the way Sasuke would approach one to protect somebody, especially when he was younger. But he didn't want to outright say it because, you know, he still has a little bit of that ego. And, and pride and shit like that that was his way of saying we gotta protect Himawadi get her out of here but of course Boruto is still young minded and he just took it as an insult although I will say this I want Himawadi to train more I really hope following these events even if it's anime only because we haven't seen this in the manga but anime only I want to see Himawadi training so when we get to the time skip because you know I'll, I'll just keep it real her age honestly sometimes escapes me like in the last video I talked about I said oh yeah you know she's five years old like apparently she's like 10 so I think she should be training by now, especially considering the day Naruto became Hokage, that whole aspect, even though it was funny, she has like those Gohan Super Saiyan 2 tendencies where she could blow up and just imagine if she's able to conquer that level of strength, that level of tenacity and all that jazz, she could be a very, very formidable opponent and a very formidable shinobi. So like, I want to see Himawadi evolve from this, see that like, yo, you were helpless to help out, you couldn't do anything, go train, become a real shinobi, and then, you know, you could probably be something incredible incredible in the future especially considering the fact that following that delta's like i bet you want to play around and she lifts up himawadi into the freaking air which i'm not even gonna lie i was very into it at that moment I, my mind wasn't on all oh, the animation in order or anything like that i was just like yo what's going on here she's lifting her up into the air and throwing a blast and naruto tries to grab her and shit like that but obviously you know it, it would be a wrap like and we're, and we're gonna talk about that in a second why it shouldn't be a wrap but okay it would be a wrap because naruto's the only one on the scene at the moment and Kawaki realizing that he's like yo fam family family jumps up there and basically at the cost of his artificial enhanced arm yeah Kawaki saves them but ultimately you know at the cost of his arm and I'm just there like that was amazing this is why yet again Kawaki is one of the best additions to the Naruto franchise post Naruto into the Boruto story like he's phenomenal this whole family dynamic of it's almost like you know the eldest son so to speak jumping in and saving his father and his little sister I love it I love a lot of that honestly if you think about it after Naruto has been family based ever since the start going back to Sarada Gaiden think about that of how it was like you know her trying to figure out if that's really her mother and you know understanding things like that with family it's family based and sometimes it, it's done very well like moments like this episode family family 
Man. And at first he tried to dress it up like, yo, you know, if the Hokage falls, we're screwed, which let's let's quickly dive into that. Why are we screwed again? Where's Ino Shikacho? Where's Kakashi? Where's my guy? Where's Rock Lee? Where's Kiba? What is going on here? Why is nobody here for the call? Like at the end of the day, the surveillance team should have already been, you know, oh, okay, somebody came into the leaf. What's going on here? Send people out. Why are they not here yet? Like I get it. Okay, you know, this is probably happening very, very quickly because Delta blew in there like a rocket, but it shouldn't take that long. You're in the scope of the village. What is everyone doing? Why hasn't anybody showed up? I'm sure Eno, she could use her telekinesis or whatever to tell Tell people like yeah you know there's some uh, baddie up in here causing some trouble uh naruto's on the scene but maybe he could use a little backup you know he got his kiddos with him like why is nobody there that honestly <laughs> kind of annoys the shit out of me because it's like fam you're in leaf yeah y'all in the village don't tell me that every single person is off on a mission or you know wh where the fuck is shino leave the kiddos at school come help that was one thing that i would argue kind of bothered me and annoyed me like no naruto is not the last line of defense there's tons of people there that arguably could help just as much if not even more in certain instances than naruto if she's somebody that's weak against taijutsu rock lee should be able to call it like you know whatever it may be there's more people is what i'm saying other than just naruto but nevertheless when kawaki tells boruto as he's lifting his you know destroyed limb and he's like yo about that vase we even now right like <laughs> oh man that was emotional it just in general fantastic episode again as Aesthetics wise wasn't the greatest, but considering it being outsourced, it was okay. The art and animation was, you know, at times dipped a little bit, but for the most part, it was steady, okay. Nothing to write home about, nothing to say, oh my god, throw this shit in the trash. But the content itself from the manga, um, it delivered. And next week's episode is going to be animated by Piro, Studio Piro themselves. So expect absolute greatness on all ends, but i'm curious what you guys thought about this episode how did you feel about kawaki jumping in to save naruto your thoughts on why isn't anybody there like they know the whole entire leaf is on alert now where is everybody and uh where do you expect all this to go how are you feeling about delta and just your overall thoughts and expectations for the boruto anime moving forward into episode 199 and beyond shout outs to naruto though doing his thing shout outs to kawaki the boruto goat that's all i have for this one though thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed if you liked anything i had to say or enjoyed the video drop me a like i'd greatly appreciate it and if you want more from me make sure to subscribe follow me on twitter instagram hit that bell to get all notifications and if you want to follow any of my other social media links of course in the description below i'm for the world and as always people have an awesome day and remember the goal golden rule anime and manga for life boy have an awesome day peace in and yeah shout outs to naruto big big changes with him shout outs to kawaki doing really awesome stuff family family, family.